Hi, everybody. My name is Kristen McLean, and I am the Executive Director of Business Development for the NPD Books Group. We are the uh, team behind BookScan, and I'm very pleased to be with you guys today to present a first look at our brand new BookScan license reporting service, which has just rolled out. And we're going to take a look today at um, what we saw happening in licensing in the last eight weeks of the year, just to give you a taste for uh, our first uh, reporting out of the service. So we're going to start with a little bit of an introduction for anyone who's not familiar with our tools and services and what we do at NPD Book. And then we'll dive right into our insights from holiday 2017 um, and what we're seeing and, and our uh, first discoveries about what happened with licensing in the fourth quarter. We'll take a little time at the end to look ahead to 2018, just to, see, to talk about what we're seeing in January and uh, what we anticipate will be trends to watch this year. And then we'll leave a little time at the end for Q&A. Uh, my colleague Allison is on the chat, and she will be proctoring the questions. So if you have questions during the presentation, please feel free to just type them into the text box, and Allison will be collecting those uh, over the course of the presentation, and we'll talk about them at the end. So I'm pretty sure that most of you guys on this webinar have worked with BookScan before, but we did invite um, a number of people who have not previously been um, service uh, clients of BookScan. So I just want to talk a little bit about what we do and, uh, and our services so that you have a sense of uh, the types of data that we collect and how we collect it. So we're best known for our NPD BookScan service. That's really the backbone not only of our business, but of the book business generally. Uh, with, within NPD BookScan, we uh, track point of sale for physical books sold in the U.S. market. And we also um, tag each one of those sales with geographic information. So BookScan allows us not only to look at the volume of sales and, and what's happening in terms of categories and what's selling, but also where they're selling. And it's a weekly service, so it's about as close to real time as you can get for this type of retail reporting. Uh, we also run exclusive account level reporting for Target and Barnes and Noble in our BookScan interface. So if you are a customer of either one of those uh, or selling into either one of those channels, we can offer you um, a view of just those channels through a special service. And then we also have a tool called NPD PubTrack Digital, which is our tool where we track digital sales. That tool is a little different than BookScan because instead of being point of sale, it's actually publisher reported. Uh, so the publishers report their sales to us directly. We capture the top 85% of the digital, traditional digital trade market directly from the publishers. Unlike BookScan, it is not weekly, it's monthly, and there is a quarter lag on that data. So it's really, um, it's really fantastic for doing things like looking at larger trends. It's a little less effective for tracking things in real time but it is the best view that's available right now for the digital trade market. On the consumer side, we actually do run uh, a fair amount of custom consumer research on the book market. So we like to think that, that this is the who and the why that, that backs up the what and where of our POS data. And we've done a wide variety of different types of projects for clients. Um, and if you're interested, you should just let us know. We'll, we'll fill you in on that. But uh, I think the most important thing that we do there is we do, uh, we can provide pretty detailed consumer demographics for who is purchasing uh, different types of books and categories. And we also uh, can take a good look at path to purchase, so helping people understand what, uh, what is driving the sales that we see on the POS side. I just want to make sure, um, Allison, can you confirm that you guys can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Great. Yeah, the sound quality changed, I wasn't sure. Um, okay, so in terms of BookScan, just to give you a sense of the scale of what we do in BookScan, um, we are really the first and largest continuous book, monitoring, book sales monitoring service available. It's really best in class. We are tracking about 500,000 ISBNs uh, on a weekly basis, and already comes in from 16,000 locations. So that includes both physical locations and um, online. We are tracking about 14 million units a week. And as I said, with Patrick Digital, uh, on the print side, we are also, also tracking about 85% of U.S. retail print sales. 
What is not included in this, just so you know, is that we don't track sales to uh, distributors. We don't track sales to educational wholesalers, schools, or libraries. So this is really uh, what's going on in the uh, open trade market of consumer buying in the book space. We have a very lengthy list of reporting retailers, but we just want to give you a taste of, of some of the big ones. Uh, everybody that you would expect to be in, reporting to BookScan reports, including Amazon. So every sale that goes out through Amazon uh, is reported to BookScan, physical sale, reported to BookScan uh, with a zip code where that book was delivered. So that is what allows us, even with our online sales, to track the geography of uh, the market. So the BookScan License Reporting Service is brand new. We have been building this now for more than a year, and we're really excited to be giving you guys a first look today. Uh, the License Reporting Service uh, taxonomy right now has 4,000, a little more than 4,000 licenses in it. So we are listening for 4,000 licenses. We've built that taxonomy to be broader than just the book market. So we have worked with our colleagues in our other areas of entertainment, like games, home entertainment, uh, toys, to create a taxonomy that is, is going to allow us to not only track what is selling right now, but what might hit the market based on hot licenses in other areas of entertainment. Currently, the reporting has about 10,000 lines in it on a weekly basis, meaning we're selling about 10,000 different ISBNs from our taxonomy. And uh, we saw about 20 million units and licensed books roll through our tracker um, in holiday 2017 from more than 100 publishers. So it's pretty robust, and uh, it's going. In, and we're continuing to build it. This is a, a live project, so we are adding licenses and we are coding um, all, all the time. Before we get into the actual data, I want to talk a little bit about why we wanted to do this. What are the business factors that we were seeing that, that um, really convinced us that this was going to be the next step and very important to our clients? What we really wanted to do when we set out to do the service was to create a holistic view of consumer engagement with licensed brands across publishers. Up until the time that we coded for licenses in BookScan, there was no way to say, uh, understand how the footprint of a brand like Star Wars, for instance, or Curious George, um, brands that are selling for more than one publisher, there was no way to actually look at that data in a unified way. And that's because the metadata didn't have a field for a license, had many other fields, but not for license. And those of us who work in the consumer market know that our fans, uh, their patterns of engagement and, and uh, their hunger for the things that they are fans of, they don't really care about the way that we've put data into silos. They don't really care uh, about the platform that it's on. They're really pursuing their own interests. So if my kid is a Minecraft fan, she's listening to Minecraft music, and she's playing the game, and she's collecting merchandise. And all of those different types of engagement happen in different places, and they're difficult to track in a uniform way. So at least in, uh, in BookScan, we have the ability, if we code for licenses, to be able to, for the first time, look at a unified view of a licensor brand and to give our clients, both the licensors and the licensees, a chance to look at that um, in one interface. I mentioned that we built this taxonomy to be cross-platform. Be cross and what we mean about that is that we would love to, in the future, be able to not only line up book data by license, but to line up other data by license, for instance, toy data next to book data by license, uh, which is something that we uh, are, are talking very actively about within NPD. So in order to do that, we have to build a taxonomy that is going to work for that, which is why we're building it to be so robust. To make our list, a licensed property has to appear on more than one platform, meaning it has to be a book and a toy, or a book and a movie, or a book and a TV show. Um, and you'll see we ran into some very interesting questions as we were doing this in the book space around authors as brands versus licenses uh, themselves. And this is an evolving project. So uh, if the thing that we're saying to our clients who are, um, who are subscribing to this service or interested in subscribing to this service is that we will work with you. The clients, subscriber clients get to review the taxonomy. We are making, sh making sure that we're capturing what, what they, uh, the full breadth of what they are putting out in the market under their own licenses. 
And we are also uh, working with them to make sure that the intelligence that we're bringing back is as useful as possible, so that it's coded properly, that we're not missing titles, uh, and that we are showing it in a taxonomy and in a structure that works for their business. In terms of what we're putting out to the clients on the service, just so you know, um, we're putting out weekly sales reporting and flat files right now that includes, in addition to all the regular book, book fields, includes uh, the publisher, the license itself, the license owner, and then we do have geographic data for this tied to the top 100 uh, U.S. markets. We have, uh, in the mid-year, we'll be moving BookScan onto Decision Key, which is NPD's uh, data platform, which is super powerful. And once we get onto Decision Key, this coding will be available as an extra data set over there so that you will be able to actually see BookScan license reporting data within BookScan on Decision Key, which we're really excited about. And that, again, is going to open the door to lining up data across other areas of NPD's business if that is what you're interested in. And then also there we have clients who are interested just in monthly category level reporting, so not necessarily looking at the item level, but really trying to understand the larger trends. And in order to serve those clients, we're actually going to be creating Tableau dashboards for the monthly brand and trend reporting off the service. Okay, so let's talk about what happened in the holiday season with licensed books. So what we found, and now this is looking at the last eight weeks of 2017, uh, going into the Christmas season, what we found is that children's books in the children's market, uh, licensed titles accounted for 28% of the sales during that period, and that in the adult space, they uh, accounted for about 13% of the sales. So license right now uh, in the book space is definitely stronger in the children's space. And that's just on a unit basis. Actually, when we look at the a market value of those, it actually goes up in the children's space to 30%, so uh, at, at uh, suggested retail price value. So it's a pretty important part of the children's market, and we anticipate that it will continue to grow there. On the adult side, uh, part of what we're going to be working on this year and thinking about with our subscribers is, um, is what constitutes a license on the adult side. So we have uh, a lot of entertainment licenses, but what about lifestyle brands? Uh, there may be room for us to grow our taxonomy over there if uh, we work with subscribers who are interested in that space. So we will um, keep letting keep keep everyone uh, in the loop in terms of how that that business is growing on the adult side. When we look at the top book licenses, so these are just the top not titles but licenses in total. Uh, this is what we're seeing as the top ten licenses in the in the Christmas season for 2017. Uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. The twelfth book came out, and that really drove a lot of the uh, of the penetration of Diary of a Wimpy Kid in uh, the, the holiday season. It sold uh, more than a million units last year, so it's a it's a still a pretty strong license, and we expect it to keep to keep seeing it on this this list for the foreseeable future. I think it's really interesting that Harry Potter landed at number two because we didn't have a major series release in 2017. We had illustrated editions of the uh, of the series that came out, and that was helpful. Uh, but it's just such a strong brand that it continues to stay on top of this list. Now, here's a situation where we have an authorist brand. So James Patterson, we have in slot number three. He really benefits from having a large number of titles, close to 400 uh, individual titles in our sales right now. And the reason that we have him on here is that he was listed in the taxonomy for our games group because in other areas of entertainment, James Patterson is the presenting brand on uh, different products. So in order to build a unified taxonomy, we, we have kept James, and down below you'll see Rick Riordan, on this list. And we believe that there are some other authors on our side that probably should also be added to this list, and this is something we're talking about. Um, an example might be John Green, for instance, who's uh, you know a recognizable brand in and of his own right. Many of his books have made it into movies, so uh, you can keep your eyes out for that. Number four, Dr. Seuss, a Grinch that's really driven by the Grinch in the Christmas period, but uh, you know he's he's a perennial bestseller for all of his books, and he is uh, expected to stay on this license list. Star Wars at number five, 
has the largest title count of all the licenses that we have been tracking. Um, the, there are more than 600,000 ISBNs, or sorry, more than 600 ISBNs on a weekly basis. And the category is made up of many smaller titles. So unlike uh, some of these other categories, like uh, licenses like Diary of a Wimpy Kid, which is really driven by the latest book, Star Wars is spread very wide. Their portfolio is really big and uh, includes categories like activity books, reference books, Lego books. So, um, you know, and then having the movie this past Christmas uh, also helped to keep this license very strong. Down below, National Geographic at number six is really driven by a pretty strong branded presence in reference and knowledge books encyclopedias, those fact books um, in different formats. And uh, we do think that reference is a really interesting category for, for licensing that is perhaps underserved right now. Paw Patrol has just a killer brand, not just in books, but in toys and TV. And so uh, had many media tie and holiday books that really drove its presence on this list. Rick Riordan, that's Percy Jackson, his portfolio, um, his, his latest series with Magnus Chase was the top selling series during the holiday season, and uh, that has put him on this list. Peppa Pig and Disney Princess round out the list at the bottom. Peppa is mostly composed of uh, scholastic readers with characters from the show. Uh, but there was a five-minute stories that Walmart put uh, on promotion on Black Friday, which uh, really helped to drive this license up the list. And then finally, Disney Princess is the top license in activity books, uh, and with uh, the majority of the publishing being done by Disney itself and Paragon, these books do particularly well in the mass merch uh, category and, and are really uh, just perennial, perennial bestsellers on this list. So now we're going to look at the top publishers of licensed books, and part of what we wanted to have happen when we built the service was to make it possible not only for people who are currently selling uh, licenses or licensing out to track their own sales, but also for people who want to do research and understand who are the dominant publishers in this space. So uh, here's just a rank list of the top publishers who are working in the license space. And I think what's really interesting is that 95% of the total sales are done by these 20 publishers. So these really are the top, top, top um, in this licensing space. And Penguin Random House at the very top just really dominates. They've got 3,200 ISBNs in print right now that we're tracking. Scholastic is coming in second at 524. Um, Disney, 759 ISBNs. And then we dropped down to Abrams and Hachette. I think that what's really interesting about this, this list also is that uh, Abrams and Scholastic are really on this list because of their dominance with Harry Potter and with uh, Diary of the Wimpy Kid but that many of these other publishers are um, getting on this list because of the, the uh, volume of different types of titles that they're, that they're doing in this license space. When we turn and look at license owners, uh, we see a slightly different story. So it's less consolidated, and there's more diversity on the list, and these top 20 only account for about 72% of the market share. So there is a, lot, a much longer tail of licensors than uh, in terms of in pub, uh, publishers who are doing big business in licensing. So uh, Disney is definitely at the top of our licensing list with more than 2,300 ISBNs licensed out uh, and tracked during the holiday season with DC and Marvel following that. Um, a number of these license owners, again, land on the list with only one license, like Abrams, Spin Master with Paw Patrol, uh, Entertainment One Sesame Workshop. So uh, there's quite a bit of diversity in when you start to pull this apart in terms of who's publishing what and whether or not they're doing their business over a big license, a big blockbuster license, or lots of smaller licenses. And it will be interesting for us as we continue to track this business to understand the velocity of some of these brands. So how do we identify fast-moving smaller brands that are moving up quickly? How do we identify new brands that are hitting the market? How do we uh, start listening for them early? So these are all questions that we're thinking about right now. Uh, speaking of velocity, here's a list of the uh, fastest moving I, uh, licenses in, in the, the last eight weeks. So these licenses 
quadrupled their weekly sales from the beginning to the end of the holiday season. So no surprise that Star Wars is up there. Wrinkle in Time in number two, that's because the movie is coming in March and we're seeing a lot of strength in that, in that property. And then I think a lot of these other titles are, again, super interesting. So we see a lot of marquee licenses on here that are tied to entertainment that are very good targets, perennial targets for super fan gift giving in the fourth quarter. So Game of Thrones, Legend of Zelda, Lord of the Rings, Doctor Who, Gravity Falls. Uh, those, you know, those are really being driven by the gift book market. And then we see other things in here that we, that we don't often think of as licenses, like the New York Times. That would be puzzle books. Uh, Marvel with uh, all other, that is non That is uh, Marvel titles that aren't tied to a particular character. So books about Marvel generally, uh, Ultimate Marvel, Marvel Encyclopedia. Again, really good targets for Christmas gift giving. And then we see some perennials like Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew on this list, Lord of the Rings. These are, um, these are books which, you know, are in the zeitgeist that uh, in the Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew department, that was a box set that was really a gift, a perfect gift set that, that really uh, brought that license up for us in the fourth quarter. So I think as we continue to track these licenses, we're going to start to see some very, very interesting patterns develop uh, and we'll be watching what happens during the main part of the year versus what happens in the fourth quarter. So here's a breakdown of the uh, categories where we saw these licensed books being published this, this year. And, and for me, this is, this is a slide that best demonstrates why this license service was so important. So on the children's side, you can see that only 21% of the total books that we tracked, and remember that's up to 30 percent of the SRP value of the children's market, only 21 percent of those books were in classified as media tie-in, which was the only way prior to this service being launched that we were able to take a, any look at all at books that had um, cross-platform appeal or licensing. So that means that 79 percent um, of these books are being categorized in other areas, and without tagging them for license, we wouldn't really be able to see them in this way. In terms of audience, we can see that about 81% of the market uh, for this uh, is juvenile right now. 18% was adult, and about 1% is young adult. So we'll see how that develops, as I said, uh, as we move the service forward. One of the things that I think that this data set is really cool for, if you are in the business of, of licensing or you're interested in getting into the business of licensing, is that you can really use this data to dig in and pull apart who is doing the publishing in particular areas and categories. So here we're looking at activity books, which is a very high growth, pretty hot area of, of the children's market right now. And what we can see is that once we start to really dig in by, by category and by BISEC, you can see that other patterns emerge. So in terms of publishers, while Paragon only had 3% of the branded books, they had 43% of the branded activity book business in the, in the fourth quarter above Penguin Random House, which is pretty impressive. Um, and they do a really booming business, and they're very good at it. And you wouldn't necessarily know that without taking the time to pull this apart. And then uh, in terms of licensed owners, we talked about the fact that Disney is really dominating. Uh, but you can see the strength of Entertainment One in there and also uh, brands like Lego as potential um, license partners. So if you're a publisher and you're interested in figuring out uh, new licensing partners and you want to look at the performance of certain brands, you can use this data. This is our first look at a few opportunity areas. We started to compare um, BISEC categories that were high growth or high performing for the number of branded titles we were seeing in there to look for what we thought might be um, some interesting opportunities for people who are in the branding business. So games and activities is definitely a, the number one category where we're seeing a lot of licenses. But relative to the volume of that category, we don't actually think that the license list is that deep. So 100 licenses, but for anybody who works in the game and activity area, you know that these are um, that these are very fast moving and that there's uh, a lot that can be done with different licenses in this space. Nonfiction reference, we mentioned earlier uh, when we talked about Nat Geo, this is actually a growing category. We, we had pretty much written off juvenile reference 
maybe 15 years ago with the rise of digital. But it's actually a high growth category for us right now. And publishers like um, publishers and licensors like Netsy are making uh, are taking taking advantage of that by creating extremely accessible reference books that are really uh, hooking into a larger trend in STEM and science and nonfiction for kids. And we think that there's opportunities there for other licenses to come in um, and take some space there. Role playing and fantasy. This is uh, games generally for kids and adults are up, and we think that there is opportunity. We've seen some very, very strong uh, entries into this category from the game space, and, uh, and it's expanding. So we think that's something to look at. Juvenile fiction, bedtime, and dreams. This is actually one of my favorite categories that's on this list. This is a perennial, perennial category. It's been growing year over year for the last few years. Parents are investing a lot of money in early childhood, and we think that uh, we think that licensors might want to take a good look at this because a bedtime story from a familiar character is always welcome. Then we talked about science and nature. We think there's a lot going on in that space. Uh, we have the ability to in, to index um, to index this data to show people where uh, markets are overperforming. So this is a slide that shows Random House's Minecraft sales against Galactic's Minecraft sales, and you can see that they're not the same. So these two publishers could use this data to help them sell in stronger in areas where the others' books are selling. So this is competitive data that becomes much easier to understand when you have access to this data in BookScan. Okay, looking ahead to 2018, uh, just want to say that we are really excited about Wrinkle in Time, which is one of the strongest licenses right now because of the movie. And in terms of larger trends to think about, these are the trends that we are watching in the larger book market and how they intersect with licensing is really something to think about. So girl power, diversity, STEM, science, kids nonfiction, comics and graphic novels, which has been on a double-digit growth curve for the last five years, and nostalgia, people's um, comfort and familiarity with um, characters that they love and how can we translate those and take advantage of this trend uh, in the license market. So that's bringing us actually right up on time. We've got about three minutes for questions. And let me say this deck is available. So if you would like a copy, you can email us afterwards at this email address, and we're happy to share it with you. And if you have questions about this um, BookSkin license service, we're happy to answer those too. If you are doing any business in licensing or you're interested in licensing uh, in any part of the business, so whether or not you are, um, are in selling licenses out or you're interested in acquiring licenses for any, any area of entertainment, please let us know and consider taking a look at the product. It's super cool. All right, Allison, do you have any questions? Hi. Um, I don't have anything coming in the Q&A box right now, so um, just email questions and we can answer them via email. Um, well, you know, maybe we'll need, wait another couple seconds. If anybody has questions, just type them in the Q&A box, please. Okay, so um, so just to be clear, so that this license service has actually launched now. Uh, we are in the process of working with subscribers to get them up and running on the data set. If you have questions about how your licenses are represented in this data, please reach out to us. We're happy to share the taxonomy. And as I said, part of the goal here is to work with licensors and licensees to make sure that we have it right, that the data that's going to be coming out of this tool is correct, and accurate. So uh, it's a large business and there's a lot of titles. So we, uh, we are working very closely with our client base and with uh, li other licensors to make sure this taxonomy is correct. So we'd love to hear from you if you have questions uh, or want to check it out. Okay, if we have no more questions, I think we're going to let you go. I hope you guys have a great afternoon and uh, hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Thanks everybody.